Again, welcome to how PubMed works selection. Today's class is about what's in PubMed and how it gets there. We'll begin with a pretest. Not only does the pretest help us see if we're teaching what we think we're teaching, but it's also an opportunity to check your own knowledge of PubMed content so that you'll know what to listen for carefully as we go. The questions are on this slide and they are also at the top of your handout. So please take a moment to jot down your answers and then at the end of class, we'll retake this test and review the answers together. So grab a slip of paper and jot down those answers somewhere, and then we'll review together at the end of class. And I'll give you a couple minutes to do that now. Take about another minute to jot those answers down for yourself, and then we'll review together at the end of class. So for now, just answer on your own, and then we'll take a look together at the end of class. Okay, go ahead and start to wrap up jotting those answers down. All right, and again, we will revisit this at the end of class, so be sure to listen for the answers as we go along. Okay, here is our agenda for today. So we've just completed our pretest. Next, I'll briefly review the contents of PubMed and how PubMed fits into the NLM collection. Then I'll survey the current publishing landscape to provide some context for the changes to PubMed over the last couple of decades. After that, we'll discuss the NLM's processes and policies for selecting PubMed content and finally, I'll talk about evaluating articles and provide some resources that you can use to assist patrons with locating high quality journals. And then we'll close with our post test. To understand the contents of PubMed, we need to understand where PubMed fits into the NLM collection. On this slide, I have a diagram of concentric circles. These circles represent the sets of bibliographic records for journals in our NLM systems. The largest set is the NLM catalog. A smaller subset is the NLM journals collection. And a subset of that is PubMed journals. You may know that the NLM catalog provides online access to NLM bibliographic data for books, electronic materials, and most importantly for us today, journals. The NLM journals collection consists of the journals that we collect the complete contents of, either starting with the first issue or at another point set by the NLM. The NLM catalog includes records for journals that are not selected for the NLM journals collection, which is why the NLM catalog circle is larger than the NLM journals collection circle here, and we'll review why that is later in class. PubMed, the NLM's online journal citation database, represents the most visible subset of the NLM journals collection. So let's review the contents of PubMed. PubMed facilitates searching across three NLM products, Medline, PubMed Central PMC, and the NCBI Bookshelf. Medline is the largest component of PubMed, as represented by the big blue disk on this slide. Medline consists primarily of citations from journals indexed for it. It does not include the full text of those articles. However, links are often available to other sources with the full text, like publisher websites and PMC. Another component of PubMed is PMC. And today we'll discuss three different types of PMC content that appear in PubMed results including archived journals, author manuscripts, and preprints. So first, PMC contains the full text, 
for journals selected for the PMC collection. PMC also includes author manuscripts that are deposited in PMC to comply with public access policies. And currently ongoing is a preprints pilot that makes preprints of NIH-funded research available in PMC. All of their disks are a different shade of green because these three make up the contents of PMC. However, they have distinct selection processes and policies, which we'll review today. And additionally, PubMed includes records for chapters, reports, and books from the NCBI bookshelf, represented by the purple disk on top. There is overlap between the contents of Medline, PMC, and Bookshelf because resources can be indexed or archived in more than one, which is why each part of the database on the slide is outlined with a dashed line. This class will cover the differences and the similarities between the processes and policies that NLM has in place for each component of PubMed. To review and to provide the answer to number one on your handout, if you're following along there, you can search PubMed for journals indexed for Medline, journals archived in PMC, author manuscripts in PMC, preprints in PMC, and NCBI bookshelf contents. PubMed exists within a complex medical landscape, or excuse me, publishing <laughs> landscape, and I'm betting that most of you are very familiar with the complexities of publishing today. So what are some of the features that you observe and perhaps deal with in your work that relate to the publishing landscape? What are the trends or the changes that you're seeing? Let me know in the chat. I would love to hear from you and what you're seeing in your work about the complexities of our publishing landscape today. So let me know what you think in the chat. Me too says open access. Yes, we are absolutely going to talk about open access and other publishing models today. Any other trends or changes to publishing that you're seeing that may affect what's in PubMed and other literature databases like it? Yes, predatory journals, digital only, absolutely moving from print to digital is certainly having an impact on publishing. Great. Yeah, faster publishing, the volume of publishing, right? Oh, public trust, absolutely. are great answers. AI, I love how many different responses we're getting and they're all different because it's a complex landscape. Interdisciplinary papers, absolutely, that maybe don't fall into one particular scope. Post-publication review, wonderful. Thank you so much for your responses. Um, these are great and I appreciate you sharing that and what you're seeing in the publishing landscape. There are three features in particular that I want to focus on today when it comes to PubMed, and those are the volume of publishing, the growth of open access, and public access policies. So all related to some of the responses you provided. So the first feature is the volume of publishing. 
Biomedical and life sciences research continue to outpace other fields in the number of articles produced. Therefore, those trying to index and archive this literature, like the NLM, are always trying to keep up. In addition to an increase in the volume of publishing, journal publishing models have evolved over the last two decades, and we'll touch on three of those today. So first is our traditional subscription model, where the reader or a library pays a fee to access contents of a journal. And it's still quite common, but this model is decreasing in dominance. Next, an open access model, as one of you mentioned, means that the complete contents of a journal are made available under a Creative Commons or a similar open access license for no charge. And finally, a hybrid model is where the full contents of a journal require subscription access, but individual articles may be made available under an open access license. All of these models come into play when we talk about PubMed. The third feature of the publishing landscape that affects PubMed content is public access policies. While open access typically describes a journal's publishing model, public access refers to funder or organizational policies that mandate authors make publicly funded research results freely available. The National Institutes of Health played a key role in the start of this movement in requiring researchers to make their results free to the public via public repositories like PMC. In August 2022, the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy announced that federal level departments and agencies are expected to update their public access policies by 2025 to make publications and research funded by taxpayers immediately available to the public. Now, sometimes organizations have open access policies that function very similarly to these public access policies. For example, a university might adopt an open access policy that encourages faculty to either publish in an open access journal or to deposit their accepted papers into a university repository. These policies have made more and more articles freely available online through repositories like PMC. I'd like to pause here and get a sense of your experience with open access and public access policies. So give me a thumbs up if your institution has an open access or a public access policy. I'm betting that some of them do. <laughs> yeah, seeing a couple thumbs for that. And a couple folks with a thumbs down, meaning they probably don't have one. Great. All right, thank you. And I have a second question for you. This time, give me a thumbs up if you help researchers to comply with open access or public access policy mandates. Maybe you provide information or classes or personal assistance. So give me a thumbs up if you do any of those things. Seeing a couple thumbs for that one. Great. All right, thank you for your responses. It's always interesting to see which institutions are implementing that. So to review and to help you complete number two on your handout, the three features of the current publishing landscape that influence PubMed content, and I would like you to keep in mind today include the volume of publishing, the growth of open access publishing models, and public access policies. All right, we just reviewed the contents of PubMed, 
and how the ever-evolving publication landscape affects it. So now we're ready to discuss the MLM's processes and policies for selecting PubMed content, starting with the MLM Collection Development Guidelines. Let me draw your attention to question number three on your handout. It asks, where does the MLM provide a transparent and publicly accessible set of criteria that we use in reviewing and evaluating the many journals that come to NLM? The answer is the NLM Collection Development Guidelines. And there's a link to the guidelines at the bottom of your handout if you want to read the full text sometime. The guidelines include a journal selection policy that applies to Medline, PMC on the journal level, and Bookshelf. NLM uses these criteria to select the journals that we acquire, preserve, and make accessible to NLM users. First, the collection development guidelines include guidance for the specific types of science that fall within the collection scope, including what the NLM considers biomedicine, healthcare, and many areas of the life sciences. Next, we'll review the main components of the NLM journal selection policy as outlined in the collection development guidelines. This slide is going to cover a lot, so I'm going to go through it slowly. First, we evaluate the journal's publication operations to ensure it has an ISSN and a title, is formatted as a collection of articles, and demonstrates regular publishing. Additionally, the selection policy states that journals should publish specific types of content, like original research, reviews, case reports, or data. Next, through its policies and processes, a journal should demonstrate good editorial quality, evidence of scientific rigor, editorial independence from the sponsor when commercial funding is received, diversity in authorship of articles, including a low proportion of articles authored by editors and editorial board members, and elements that follow best practices for the objectivity, credibility, and scientific quality of its content, such as well-defined methods for selecting articles, a transparent peer review process, author and editor conflict of interest statements, and other ethical policies, as well as article level statements indicating adherence to these policies. And on the screen, I've made that box look different than the others because it's an important point that I want you to remember. Finally, NLM also expects journals to conform with the guidelines and the best practices promoted by professional scholarly publishing organizations. These organizations include the Committee on Publication Ethics, the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors, the Council of Science Editors, and other groups like NISO. This is a good time to remind you that your handout includes a table with the acronyms that I'll use in this class, so you can always refer back to that. So for those of you who are librarians, give me a thumbs up if you have a similar journal selection policy statement for your library collection. seen a couple thumbs. Great. Yeah. Excellent. I'm sure some of this is familiar to what your library uses. So in addition to reviewing the individual journal, NLM staff review publishers that are new to NLM to determine whether the publisher is eligible to have their journals in the NLM collection. 
First, NLM will only consider an application from an organization that has been publishing scholarly content for a minimum of two years. And this is the answer to number four on your handout, two years. We look to see that publishers follow guidelines and best practices from professional organizations, including the ICMJE's recommendations for the conduct, reporting, editing, and publication of scholarly work in medical journals, and a joint statement by COPE, DOAJ, WAME, and OASPA titled Principles of Transparency and Best Practices in Scholarly Publishing. And both of those reports are linked on your handout. We look for accurate information, evidence that the publisher knows how to operate a journal, and evidence that journal content is actively maintained. If they don't pass this review, the publisher may reapply after a period of time. Some publishers may make misleading claims or engage in other fraudulent practices. Others simply lack the knowledge or the resources to produce a scientific journal of the quality required for Medline or PMC. All right, I just gave you a lot of information, so I want to stop for a moment and review a few key points about how we evaluate journals. In describing NLM's journal selection policies, I mentioned that we look for articles with good editorial quality, evidence of scientific rigor, and elements that contribute to the objectivity, credibility, and scientific quality of its content. And then I mentioned some specific things that we look for that align with industry best practices. So my question is, can you tell me some of the specific best practices NLM looks for to gauge whether a journal meets the selection policy? Think about it, and if you can remember one, drop it in the chat, and then we'll review this together. Yeah, I'm getting some good answers here from Melanie about some of the elements we look for when it comes to publication operations. Yes, Kathleen mentions compliance with industry best practices and recommendations and guidelines. Great. So there's three that I'm thinking of specifically. Let's review those together. So in the solid orange box on this screen are some of the best practices that NLM looks for in a journal to gauge its objectivity, credibility, and scientific quality of content. That includes well-defined methods for selecting articles, a transparent peer review process, and author and editor conflicts of interest policies. So thank you for those responses. And at this point, I'm going to pause and see if any questions have come in. Brittany, are there any questions that I or our panelists can answer? We've had a couple come in. The first question, um, so the publishers have to be in business for two years before they're considered. How long does an actual journal have to be actively publishing articles for it to be considered for selection? Yeah, so I can answer that one, and I think it's actually going to be shown on one of the, the next slides, but it depends on the database. Um, if we're talking about PubMed Central, they have to have published a minimum of 25 peer-reviewed articles. And for Medline, they have to have published at least 40 peer-reviewed articles um, and have been publishing for at least one year. 
Okay, and our next question, how do you treat journals with good standing but online only? Hi, this is Erin Zellers. I believe that you're probably asking about licensing at this point. I, I don't know for sure. NLM does not uh, make a distinction around uh, selection decisions if a journal is online only. And at this time, NLM's preference is to license the online instance of any journal in either journal database. Did that answer the question, whomever asked it? Um, uh, Marina, if that answered your question, let us know. Uh, follow up to Marina's question. In what cases do you index journals retroactively since issue one and in what cases you don't? I can start ask, answering the question around uh, typically for PMC participation and Medline, the, we allow two years previous from when the review was conducted. I do believe that's on an upcoming slide. Lauren, do you want to take more on that? Yeah, I don't have a whole lot to add on that, but the determination for Medline is made by our, um, our, our, uh, our indexing uh, folks, but generally it's about two years that they'll go back. Um, so if the journal has been publishing for 40 years, we won't take back to issue one. But if they're in their first couple years of publishing, then often it will go back to issue one. Um, and the reason that we take the last two years of content is because that is the content that we use when we do the scientific quality review. So that will be the content that our reviewers have looked at and based their decision on. Hi, this is Amanda. I'll just offer one qualification on that, that um, PubMed will take that content from Medline Index Journals as far back as they want to supply it. We will not index that back content with MeSH terms. So some publishers choose to supply back content. A lot of them do not. Um, but those older citations, while we take them and they're searchable, they do not have MeSH terms applied by them. Those uh, MeSH terms are only done from that date that the indexers select forward. Okay. And I'll circle back to Marina's question. Do you, so you treat print and online only equally? I think that this is an application-related question. The applications uh, we for PMC and uh, for PMC, we look at the online instance of the journal. Um, and I believe, generally speaking, that's the, the case for Medline, too. Medline, we will review print-only titles. Um, if there is an electronic version, that is the version we will use. But we do currently still allow print-only titles to submit applications to Medline. The caveat, though, is that these journals provide their own data to PubMed, so these print journals would still have to be able to provide abstract and citation data in XML format to PubMed and upload their own data. So sometimes that can be limiting for them. Great, thank you. We have a question from Lee. If a journal article has been shown to be unreliable, example, based on a logical fallacy or a misinterpretation of data, does PubMed have any policies about making the public aware of such problems? Yeah, so I can take the first stab on this one too. So we do expect these kinds of issues to be resolved by the journal. Um, so we in, uh, encourage the users to bring their concerns directly to the journal. Um, and then for the journal to look into the issue, and if there is um, a verifiable concern, then we expect that journal to then issue a correction or a retraction or whatever the appropriate measure is. They would then upload that correction or retraction into PubMed, and the data would apply in PubMed uh, in that way. Thank you, Lauren. And our last question from Shavendra, 
Is there any bias in, in the selection process favoring journals from specific regions, languages, or disciplines? So we don't treat journals differently based on their region, language, or discipline. I will say that currently for PMC, um, we are only able to evaluate journals that are in, uh, primarily in full text English or Spanish at present. Um, Medline, any journal in any language can apply. Um, I, the one caveat I would say is that sometimes, particularly for Medline, um, if it's an area of particular interest in the world, it can be given a little bit um, that can kind of count for it um, in terms of like what the impact of the journal would be if it's a geographic region that has a particular interest um, that might count in its favor. Um, but generally speaking, I would say the answer to this is, is no. Thank you, and that's all the questions we have for now. Great, thank you. Thanks for all those questions and to our panelists um, for answering them. Yeah, and we're going to go more in depth about some of those answers throughout the rest of the presentation. So um, feel free to you know, put follow-up questions or additional questions in the chat as we go. Okay, so now we are going to focus on the journal content that comes to PubMed from Medline and PMC. All of the selection criteria and processes described up to this point apply to journals selected for both Medline and PMC. Medline is the largest component of PubMed. It currently contains more than 31 million citations from more than 5,200 journals published worldwide. PMC full text journals, which number over 3,200, account for more than 8 million citations in PubMed. First, a little background. Medline started in 1879 as a print bibliographic index of medical articles called Index Medicus. This was a physical index with copies found most often in research and medical libraries. It then evolved to take on several other formats and names, including via CD-ROM in 1971. In 1997, PubMed was created as a way to access Medline through the internet. And next, let's review PMC's development. It was established in 2000 at the beginning of the open access movement. At that time, PMC was exclusively an online archive of journal content. A journal was required to supply their complete contents to PMC. In 2005, the NIH began encouraging, though not yet requiring, researchers to submit their articles to PMC to give the public access. This was when PMC took on a second role as a repository for peer-reviewed, funded research results and introduced author manuscripts into the collection. Since that time, public access has continued to evolve, first becoming mandatory at NIH in 2008, and then in 2013 expanding to cover all of the large research funders in the U.S. government. As I mentioned earlier, it expanded again in August 2022, and all federal agencies must make taxpayer-funded publications and research available by the end of 2025. At this point, you may be wondering why NLM has two separate journal databases. Medline and PMC have distinct purposes and characteristics, some of which are shown on this table. Both databases primarily contain peer-reviewed journal literature, and their citations are searchable in PubMed. However, only Medline citations in PubMed are indexed with NLM's medical subject headings, or MeSH terms. PMC contains the full text of the article in fulfillment of its dual role as an archive, whereas Medline only contains the citation data, which is information like abstracts, titles, and other metadata. Both databases are part of the NLM collection, 
And for that reason, journals in both must meet the requirements of the NLM collection covered in previous slides. This includes having a biomedical focus. As you saw on the timelines, Medline is a much older database, and for this reason, it makes up the majority of content in PubMed. And finally, both databases have rigorous scientific evaluation processes. In the next part of this presentation, I'll explain these two journal selection processes, highlighting where they overlap and where they diverge. These are the steps for a journal to be included in Medline or PMC. First, a publisher or journal must submit an application. Then, NLM staff complete an initial application screening. Next, journals are reviewed for their scientific quality. And finally, a publisher completes a technical requirements check. So let's begin with the initial application screening. This slide compares and contrasts the initial application screening requirements for Medline and PMC. And we touched on some of this during the Q&A. Medline journals are required to have a minimum of 40 peer-reviewed articles, and PMC is required to have 25. Medline requires English titles and abstracts, while PMC accepts full-text English and Spanish articles. Both, have, should, both should have registered ISSNs, both should be able to provide electronic access according to the NLM's electronic access policy, unless the journal is print only. Medline requires that journals have been publishing a minimum of 12 months, while PMC has no minimum. Both require that journals be primarily biomedical in scope, and finally, both require that publishers have at least a two-year history of quality scholarly publishing. The next step is the scientific quality process. This is a rigorous, multi-step process in which many factors are assessed and involves review of the journal content by NLM staff and external experts. Therefore, the answer to number six on your handout is true. It is true that Medline and PMC journal applications undergo a scientific quality review by NLM staff and external experts. Let's review who those external experts are. For Medline, this review is done by the Literature Selection Technical Review Committee, or LISTRIC. LISTRIC has 15 members, including medical librarians and scientists, and it meets three times a year. On average, Medline reviews 300 applications per year. PMC's review is completed by two expert consultants, including a medical librarian and a scientist. Many of them are former Listric members. On average, PMC reviews 500 applications per year. The Listric and PMC expert consultants make recommendations to the NLM, and then NLM makes the final decision about a journal. Next, we'll review the criteria that Medline and PMC staff and our external experts use to evaluate the scientific rigor of a journal. NLM views each journal comprehensively, and this slide outlines some of the criteria that we use during that review. First, NLM uses the definition of scientific rigor provided by the NIH Office of Extramural Research, which defines scientific rigor as the strict application of the scientific method to ensure robust and unbiased experimental design, methodology, analysis, interpretation, 
and reporting of results. This includes full transparency in reporting experimental details so that others may reproduce and extend the findings. Editorial quality is considered for both databases, and that includes factors such as writing clarity and figure or table quality. Additionally, we look for detailed policies and evidence that the ethics policy is being enforced. Medline goes beyond scientific rigor to also consider things like significance and novelty of the research, its website functionality, and journal impact, which is based on internal criteria and not an impact factor. And in fact, NLM does not consider metrics from other organizations, such as impact factor, citation metrics, or status and other indexes when evaluating a journal. So if the journal passes that scientific quality review for Medline or PMC, then it goes on to the final step of ensuring that it meets all technical requirements. Journals and publishers upload their own content to Medline and PMC. This process is more advanced and time consuming for PMC as they must provide the full text content, any images and supplemental materials whereas Medline journals only have to provide citation data and have the option to provide conflict of interest statements. Medline also has archiving requirements for electronic journals. These journals must be archived in an acceptable repository to ensure long-term preservation and access to the content. At present, the acceptable repositories are clocks, Portico, and PMC. We do realize that a publisher's business practices or a journal's policies may change over time. If a journal undergoes significant changes, the NLM may reevaluate it for continued collection. These include significant changes to the journal's editorial board, its aims and scope, its publisher, or its scientific or editorial quality. If an issue is found, NLM may reevaluate the journal to ensure that it continues to meet the scientific quality standard for PMC or Medline. The reevaluation process will look largely the same as the journal selection process for new titles. If the publisher is no longer meeting best practices, then we may decide to not collect the titles from this publisher going forward. It is important to note, though, that if a decision is made to no longer collect a title in Medline or PMC, the records already publicly available will remain publicly available for archival purposes. So that is the Medline and the PMC journal selection process. So how do we find what journals are in Medline and what journals are in PMC? We're going to complete two exercises together to find this out. So we'll start with Medline journals and this exercise is also on the handout as question number seven if you want to review it there. So my question is what NLM catalog search string retrieves records for all journals currently indexed in Medline. And the steps on this slide walk you through one fast way to do this. You can open up any web browser and search for the NLM catalog. Once you're there, under the NLM catalog tools menu, select journals in the NCBI databases link. On that page, click journals currently indexed in Medline, located below the search bar. And then take a look in the search bar for the search string that appears. And once you've got that, give me a thumbs up, and then we'll go over this together.
Right, I'm already seeing lots of thumbs. Y'all are quick, which is great. So let's go ahead and review how to find this. To find a list of all the journals currently indexed in Medline, go to the NLM catalog and search using the search string currently indexed. Or you can use the filter on the sidebar that says journals currently indexed in Medline. All right, now let's look at finding the list of journals currently being added to PubMed Central PMC. And this one is number eight on your handout. So this time my question is, what NLM catalog filter, so filter, limits your search to the journals currently being added to PubMed Central PMC? And I'll give you a hint. You want to click on the Show Additional Filters button in the catalog. And once you've found that filter, give me a thumbs up, and then we'll take a look together. Great, seeing our thumbs, excellent. All right, let's take a look together at that answer. So to find a list of PubMed Central journals, click on Show Additional Filters from the NLM Catalog Filters menu, then select PubMed slash PMC Journals, and then click Show. And there you will find the options to filter to PubMed Central journals or forthcoming journals. After you select the PMC Central Journals filter, you'll see a search string appears in the search details box. I've got that highlighted here. Now we already know that currently indexed search string will pull up all the Medline journals. That's left over from our previous search. So the journal's PMC search string will retrieve all PMC journals. So you can use either the filters or the search string to limit in the catalog to PMC journals. Related to that, we can combine these two search strategies to find all journals that are currently added to PubMed. And this is number nine on your handout. What is the search string to use in the NLM catalog to list all journals that are currently added to PubMed? So we've done two searches in the NLM catalog so far, currently indexed Medline journals and archived PMC journals. To find all journals currently added to PubMed, we need to combine these two searches. So how would you do that to create one search for all currently added PubMed journals? Let me know what you think in the chat, what that search string might look like, if you have an idea. You can drop it in the chat. This one is a little trickier, so it's okay. <laughs> All right, we've got one option here from Shivendra. I think you're close. You are close. And again, this one's a little trickier. Caitlin's close to, yes, we're getting there. Let, let's review this together. So we're putting a lot of our elements together here that we have found. So to find all journals currently being added to PubMed, we can use this search string, currently indexed or journals PMC. 
Currently indexed will pull in Medline journals and journals PMC will pull in PMC journals. And then you don't want to forget to combine them with OR so that we get results from both. So yeah, thank you for your responses um, and at creating those search strings. And these are also uh, on your handout, so you can refer back to them later if needed. Great. All right. At this point, I'll pause and see if any more questions have come in. Brittany, what questions can we answer? So we've had a couple of questions come in so far. Um, the first one is about PMID. Lee thought PubMed started when PMIDs were assigned. When he searches for the article assigned PMID, it goes to an article published in 1975. I can take this one. So there's not actually a relationship, a direct relationship between a PMID number and the publication date of an article. NLM started assigning PMIDs in 1996 when PubMed was launched. Um, but as you know, at that time, like Medline already existed. So they were loading batches of citations. PMID number one from 1975 just happens to be in that first batch that was loaded into the new PubMed database. Great, thank you. And the next question comes from Marina. She says that some journals have a significant indexing time lag. Some have content indexed ahead of time. What does this depend on? That's a great question. I don't know if any of our panelists want to grab that question. Erin. Oh, sorry, Erin, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Amanda. That's fine. <laughs> sure. Um, so I'm not completely sure what you mean by indexing, Marina. If you're talking about mesh indexing, once the journal has been selected for Medline, and it's gone through our technical review process, which that can take some time for the publisher to get set up to provide those citations to us. Um, then once the citations are added to the database, we expect indexing now that it's automated to take place within one to two days, typically. Sometimes, you know, technical issues might come up. It may be a little more than that. If you're seeing citations that you believe um, were added to the PubMed database like a while ago, weeks ago, and they haven't been indexed yet, I encourage you to write to the NLM help desk and let us know so that we can look into it. So, okay, I see that you're qualifying your question now with both mesh indexing and record creation. Um, so, like I said, mesh indexing, now that it's automated, all of that should, for Medline records, should take place within about two days um, now. The record creation is once the publisher supplies the data to us, within 24 hours, the citation is available in PubMed, but every publisher has a different timeline um, and workflow for how they supply that data to us. Um, so if there's something you, like a, an article that you think should be in PubMed because it was selected for Medline or PMC and it hasn't been submitted yet, you don't see it there, we encourage you to reach out to the publisher. The publisher has access to our PubMed data management system, and it's their responsibility to supply us with that data and get those records created. Great, thank you. And that's all of the questions that have come in so far. All right, great. Thanks, everyone. I always learn something new during the Q&A portion of this class, which is wonderful. Um, okay. All right, so let's keep moving along. In the next section of our presentation, we'll be talking about some of the other components of PMC. Today, PMC contains more than 9.4 million publicly accessible articles. We already discussed the over 8 million articles that are formally published in a scholarly journal that is archived in PMC and goes through the selection process that we just reviewed. So next, we'll discuss two other components of PMC. Author manuscripts that have been peer reviewed and accepted for publication in a journal, and preprint versions of articles that have been made public prior to peer review.
we'll start with author manuscripts. Any author manuscripts in PMC will have a corresponding citation in PubMed. The author manuscript is the version of a paper that has been peer reviewed and accepted for publication by the journal. It should include all changes made during the peer review process. Author manuscripts come from a variety of journals because of the large number of funders who have named PMC as their central repository for funded research. At this time, PMC serves as the repository for 10 U.S. federal agencies. These include the major funding agencies within the Department of Health and Human Services, like the NIH, CDC, and FDA. PMC also partners with some private funders like the Gates Foundation and the Health Research Alliance. Through Europe PMC, PMC serves as the repository for 37 European funders. Other funding organizations like NASA reference PMC as one option for authors to use as a repository to comply with their public access policies. Because of the variety of sources of manuscripts in PMC, they reflect a wider range of journals than you might expect in a biomedical database. Let's focus for a moment on author manuscripts that are NIH funded. They are primarily published in Medline journals. About 90% of the more than 1.5 million NIH-funded papers are published in Medline journals, which you can see on this pie chart. And this is also the answer to number 10 on your handout. So what about that 10% that's not in a Medline journal? For author manuscripts that are not from a Medline journal or are not in the NLM collection, it's good to keep in mind that there's a few reasons this may be. It could be that a journal has not yet undergone scientific review by NLM. It could be that the journal is traditionally out of scope for the NLM collection. For example, we see a growing amount of NIH research being published in engineering journals. Or it may be that the journal itself has not met NLM standards for Medline or for the collection. It's easy to identify author manuscripts in PMC because a funder branded author manuscript banner is visible at the top and down the side of the entire page. Also, the citation includes the paper's manuscript status. And the DOI and a link to the published version are provided in a yellow box below the citation. You can also link from the journal title at the top of the MLM catalog to view the status of a journal. So let me show you how to do that. To navigate to the MLM catalog from a PMC record, click on the journal title in the top left and then select View in MLM Catalog from the drop-down menu that appears. Then check the current indexing status to learn more about the indexing status and why you may be seeing this article in PubMed or PMC. Okay. Next, I'll briefly review the preprint pilot that is making NIH funded preprints available via PMC. So give me a thumbs up if you're familiar with preprints and what they are. I imagine that many of us are familiar, but it's good to take a pulse of how many of us are. Yeah, seeing lots of thumbs. Wonderful, thank you. So to make sure that we're all on the same page, preprints are complete and public drafts of scientific documents that have not yet been peer reviewed. In June 2020, 
The NLM launched phase one of the NIH preprint pilot to focus on preprints from NIH funded research relating to COVID-19. Phase two launched in January 2023 and includes any NIH funded work. There are currently over 18,000 preprints in PMC. Because these preprints are available through PMC, then they are discoverable in PubMed. And on your handout is a link to an in-depth description of that pilot. Like author manuscripts, preprints are clearly labeled in PubMed and PMC with a green label across the top of the record that includes a link to more information about the pilot. And finally, let's take a look at the last source of PubMed records, the NCBI bookshelf. There are currently about 12,000 items in the NCBI bookshelf. The pie chart on this slide illustrates how many different types of documents Bookshelf contains, like systematic reviews, clinical guidelines, textbooks, and reference materials. It includes works published by the National Academies Press, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, the Canadian Agency for Drugs and Technologies in Health, and other authoritative publishers. Content is added to Bookshelf through direct deposits by participating publishers, deposits by publishing, funding, or sponsoring organizations, and conversion projects with NIH-sponsored authors and editors. Records for many items in Bookshelf are included in PubMed. After a publisher submits an application to Bookshelf, there are three review steps, and these should look really familiar by now. There is the initial application screening, a, quality, a scientific quality review, and a technical quality review. All content in Bookshelf is peer-reviewed. It all falls within the scope of the NLM Collection Development Guidelines, and it's all reviewed by NLM for scientific quality and data integrity. Bookshelf content in PubMed has a bookshelf ID and is labeled with free books and documents. Clicking on the bookshelf ID will take you to the entry in Bookshelf. And that concludes the section on Bookshelf. So now that we've talked about our selection policies and procedures for various NLM products, I want to review finding the indexing status for a journal. So we're going to go over together questions number 11 and 12 on your handout. So you may recall that we want to begin by looking in the NLM catalog for the indexing status of a journal. We want the NLM catalog. And from there, we can answer these two questions. What is the indexing status of the journal BMC Pulmonary Medicine? And what issues of BMC Pulmonary Medicine are in PubMed Central? So let's review together how to find those answers. Again, in the NLM catalog, I'll locate my journal title and then click on the title to learn more about it. Journal records contain indexing information, including the dates of inclusion for Medline, PubMed, and PubMed Central. So here is our example that shows a journal indexed in Medline, starting with volume five in 2005, and available full text in PMC starting with Volume 1 in 2001. If you would like to learn more about any particular journal's participation level in PubMed Central, you can follow the link to PMC. And I also want to show you an example of a journal that is not currently indexed for Medline and is not in the NLM collection. So here's our example of that. 
and instead it includes a note that citations are for articles where the manuscript was deposited in PubMed Central PMC in compliance with public access policies. All right. So to recap, what you find in PubMed. The vast majority of citations in PubMed are from Medline journals. Medline consists of citations for journals in the biomedical and life sciences. The Medline database accounts for more than 31 million of PubMed's 36 million records. We are currently indexing more than 5,200 journals for Medline. Those citations from Medline journals are the only citations in PubMed that have our medical subject headings applied. PubMed also includes citations for the full text articles that are in PubMed Central PMC, our free full text archive. There are currently more than 3,200 journals being added to PMC. About one quarter of PMC journals are Medline journals. Combined, there are more than 7,700 journals that are currently being regularly added to PubMed, either through Medline or PMC or both. Author manuscripts in PMC are records for individual articles that are reporting on funded research. These articles are submitted to comply with public access policy mandates. These records are added to PubMed when the article is published. About 90% of NIH-funded author manuscripts in PMC are published in Medline journals. We're currently piloting the availability of NIH-funded preprints in PMC and therefore PubMed. And finally, there are also records for 12,000 free online technical reports, systematic reviews, and other monographs in biomedicine from the NCBI bookshelf. We also reviewed today how to find the indexing status of a journal and how to identify an author manuscript, a preprint, and bookshelf material in PubMed. And on your handout is a table with search strings and filters you can use in PubMed to review results from each resource. Okay, so at this point, I will pause to see if any questions have come in. We have time for a couple more. Brittany, anything we can answer? Oh, we just got a question from Marina. What are criteria for NCBI bookshelf selection? Book selection looks a bit sporadic. Also, what is the treatment of new editions of included books? Yeah, I uh, can. Oh, oh go sorry. Ahead. No, 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 I, go I ahead. Was, yeah, <laughs> thanks, Lord. I was just going to say, I'll go back to the slide um, with some of the criteria. It's so bookshelf follows a very similar uh, process as Medline and PMC. Everything in Bookshelf has to go through the NLM collection development guidelines that we looked at at the beginning, um, and everything is peer-reviewed. But Lauren, I don't know if you can speak more to the rest of the question. Well, no, I was just going to say for the sporadic bit, um, keep in mind that we don't just select books from, from the ether. They have to, the publisher has to come to us and submit an application and request to be in. So that might explain some of what you're describing as um, being sporadic is just that, um, you know, we, we can't just select stuff that we like to be in, in bookshelf. It, um, it has to actually apply, submit an application, go through the process. Um, for new editions of included books, if a book is already in bookshelf and they publish a new edition, um, we usually want to have that new edition of the book um, in bookshelf as well. Um, and it, it depending on how much it's changed, it may or may not have to go through the full review process again. Um, and I can drop something into the chat too with the full bookshelf um, criteria if that didn't fully answer your question, Marina, just let me know. It looks like that answered her question. 
We don't have any other questions that have come in so far. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so we are going to move on to our final topic. I will jump back up to that slide. Um, so let's move on to the final topic of discussing journal quality. I'm going to talk briefly about guidance to help authors and researchers at your institution navigate the complex landscape of scholarly journal publishing today. We know that these issues of journal and article quality are not specific to NLM. And we also know that these challenges, while they're daunting, are an opportunity for librarians. And in fact, in 2016, the Federal Trade Commission, or FTC, issued consumer guidance about journal quality concerns, and they directed researchers to librarians. So you're the experts here. And this is not just a selection issue for libraries, but it's also an education opportunity. Helping your researchers assess a journal's transparency and quality and peer review process could be a really valuable asset to your institution. And that brings us to question number 13 on your handout. The FTC Consumer Guidance also offers a link where researchers can report concerns about a publisher's business practices. And your handout includes that link as well. If you're looking for a simple resource to share with your researchers, there is Think, Check, Submit. It's a checklist researchers can use to assess the credentials of a journal or a publisher. It was established by organizations from different areas of the publishing ecosystem, including publishers, professional organizations, the ISSN Center, librarian groups, and that range of knowledge is reflected in the guidance they provide in a very easy to use way. And there's a link to Think, Check, Submit on your handout. The NLM refers to specific guidelines from various organizations for assessing the quality of a journal that you can also use and share with your research communities. And once again, links to these guidelines and checklists are available on your handout. So for systematic reviews and meta-analyses, refer to the PRISMA guidelines. For case reports, you can review the CARE case report guidelines. For clinical trials, refer to the CONSORT guidelines. And for animal studies, ARRIVE provides guidance. And one other resource for you is called Equator. The Equator, or Enhancing the Quality and Transparency of Health Research, is an international initiative that seeks to improve the reliability and value of published health research literature by promoting transparent and accurate reporting and the wider use of robust reporting guidelines. It carries the tagline, a one-stop shop for writing and publishing high-impact health research. It advances the work done by individual groups over the last 15 years and is the first coordinated attempt to tackle the problems of inadequate reporting systematically on a global scale. Additionally, NLM maintains an adapted format of Equator with brief descriptions of each paper type and you will find both of these links on your handout. So at this point, I will ask Brittany to put the link to the handout answer key in the chat. So you'll have the answers and you'll have all the links and guidance that we've provided today. Thank you, Brittany. Okay, I don't believe we've had any additional questions, so I'm gonna jump us up to our post test so we have a little time for that. Um, so we are at our post-test. It is the same as our pre-test. So you can look at the answers, or excuse me, the questions on your handout or on the slide. So take a moment to record your answers if they have changed since our pre-test, and then we'll review them together. 
So I'll give you about two minutes to do that, and then we will see what our answers are. Okay, take a few seconds to wrap up answering, and then we'll review our questions together. Okay, so here are our answers. Question number one, which of the following groups outside of NLM reviews journals for Medline? And our answer here is the Literature Selection and Technical Review Committee, or LISTRIC. LISTRIC recommends journals for inclusion in Medline, and NLM makes the final decision. Question number two, which contains bibliographic records for the largest set of journal titles? And the answer here is the NLM catalog. The NLM catalog includes bibliographic data for journals not included in the NLM journals collection, therefore making it the largest set of journal titles. And question number three, from where could you generate a list of current Medline or PubMed Central journals? And our answer here is also the NLM catalog. You can use the NLM catalog to find a complete list of Medline and PMC journals. And remember that directions for doing that are on the handout. Number four, what are the sources for PubMed records? Select all that apply. And the correct answer is all of them. PubMed includes journals indexed for Medline, journals archived in PMC, author manuscripts, and preprints in PMC and books and book chapters in the NCBI bookshelf. And then our final question, what is your best source for information about what is included from a journal in PubMed? And our answer again, we see a pattern here, is the NLM catalog. So once you've located a journal in the catalog, you can look for that indexing status note. All right, so, Last few minutes here, we're gonna go over some takeaways. So in addition to Medline and PMC participating journals, PubMed also includes records for individual articles that are in PMC to comply with public access policies, as well as records for select content in the NCBI bookshelf and preprints of NIH funded research for the NIH preprint pilot. Selection processes are different for different NLM products, but they all include a check for minimum requirements, a scientific quality review, and a technical review. Acceptance into the NLM collection is a prerequisite for inclusion in Medline, PubMed Central at the journal level, and bookshelf. 
A final note. These three resources are scientific literature databases offered to the public by the U.S. National Library of Medicine. Once publications are selected for inclusion in a database, NLM does not review, evaluate, or judge the quality of individual articles and relies on the scientific publishing process to identify and address problems through published comments, corrections, and retractions. The presence of any article, book, or document in these databases does not imply an endorsement of or concurrence with the contents by NLM, the National Institutes of Health, or the U.S. federal government. If you do have quality concerns about particular articles or journals in PubMed, we encourage you to contact us and to contact the editor or the publisher. Librarians have an important role in educating and assisting authors and researchers in discerning high-quality publications, so please let us at NLM know how we can work together in this endeavor. Thanks for watching. This video was produced by the Network of the National Library of Medicine. Select the circular channel icon to subscribe to our channel, or select a video thumbnail to watch another video from the channel.